TikTok on there. So why are you doing that? Yeah, it's called TikTok Freak. Um, it's a full EP. It's going to probably be the first EP ever distributed on the TikTok platform as a partnership. Because um, I realized that my catalog was getting so many streams on TikTok. And a song that I had released before my first, or everyone thought was my first single, Locked Up, Bonanza, had become such a huge, huge thing. And I said, man, this could be an opportunity to get you know, um, more engaged with my younger fans and younger generation, but at the same time, allow me to get that perfect window to come back to doing what I love, which was music. Well, yeah, and there have been songs that have gone viral because right. of doing so well on TikTok. How much of a difference do you think social media is playing now in getting music Oof. heard and out there? Social media is, is, is like, I mean, the, it, the impact is tremendous. I've never seen anything like it, you know, because I remember back when I was coming up, we literally had to go from radio station to radio station to radio station to club to record store to like we literally had to go to every single specific you know location personally now i can do everything stream from my phone and the whole world will get it so it made life so much easier though as well isn't it that's the only thing it, it, it allows for it to be super transparent everybody get the same exact chance so it makes it very convoluted very it's a lot of traffic as far as artists and talent and content creators now, yeah. And, and is that an extra challenge, not just writing the music, but also staying relevant, being on the right platforms, right. getting heard? How much of a challenge are you finding that now? Um, well, with me, it's not much of a challenge because I've kind of built an audience base before the actual, the bang, but I know for a lot of newer artists, it takes a lot longer to get recognised unless you have some kind of marketing, you know, genius around you and know, understand the way that... You just got to be super creative and different. And, and you've got your own label, haven't you? So you know all about right. some of those newer acts coming in to the, to the yes. scene. Yes. I also use the platform to look for new talent and even find ways to find better and different ways to do things that I've always had love to do for. And yet you've also worked with some incredible established artists as well, haven't right. you? Eminem, David Guetta. You, you also worked, of course, with Lady Gaga, didn't you? I yeah. Mean, and that was way back when. That was, yeah. Did you, did you know <laughs> when, you, when you first worked with her just how big she'd be? No, I, I mean, the moment I saw her and laid eyes on her, I knew she was a star. It was like, whoa, like, who's that? And then when I saw her actually singing in the booth, I was like... She's just, she's going to be the future, for sure. And are there many other people that you've had that same experience with? Yes. Oof, man, it's, it's so many. <laughs> when I go back and think about how many artists that we discovered or worked with, I mean, the list just goes on and on. I think, you know, that was probably my gift here was to just kind of utilise my celebrity and give other people a chance to actually become who they're truly supposed to be. Can, can you put your finger on what it is that you look for? Well, me, today, I look for hard workers. Um, before, I used to just look for good talent. But then I realized that everybody with talent aren't really hard workers. And it takes a lot of work in this business to take it to the next level. So the talent alone won't be able to do it for you. So many things I could talk about uh, with you today. I do want to touch on uh, some of the comments you've made about Kanye West, because right. uh, he's been in the news a lot. Um, a lot of controversies, including right. a, a Twitter ban for anti-Semitic comments. Uh, he's been banned again by Elon Musk this morning for inciting violence. Wait, Elon banned him? Apparently so. <laughs> so but, but you've shown some support for him. Why have you done that? Well, because I'm, I, I show support for, you know, opinion. And I think people will always have an, a specific opinion. And I think the moment we get to the place where we close our minds up to other people's opinion, it kind of it, it kind of um, doesn't allow us to get to better know each other, better know our mindsets, and more than anything, better know our movements. And I think sometimes we kind of prejudge people from the way that we may see or view things. And I think sometimes we should just open up our minds, let things play all the way out, and better understand the situation so we have a better solution for it. And I know that you've said you don't agree with his comments, but if they're really offensive, do you, will you still continue to back him? Yeah, because I'm, 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 I'm a backer of the, the right to believe what you want to believe. Now, the day me and him have a conversation, I will give him my point of view on why I disagree. And then he may come back and say, you know what, you're right. Or he may come and say, well, I'm not. Then, I, then at that moment, it's my job to understand why he's viewing it that way. So I think conversation and communication is always the key. But sometimes we block that out and you never can get anywhere if you're not communicating. So it doesn't trouble you that he makes really offensive comments to many people? Not nah, really, because those, those comments don't really affect me personally. And I think if everyone takes it that way, then it's different. And if it does affect you personally, then find a way to actually respond in a way to where that conversation can be you know, uh, reciprocated. Because I think sometimes when someone is offensive or offended, they just lash out in defense or lash out to kind of 
make that person feel the same offense that they felt. And I think, you know, when you, t when you take negative and you, you kind of apply the response negatively back, it never, you can only get negative back. So I think it's really a matter of both sides understanding what it is. Don't take things too personal yet until you understand the situation. OK, one other subject yeah. we want to move on to, which is um, very important, is the World Cup. Right. You're here in the UK. You were born in America, but you spent a lot of your childhood in Senegal. It's a place close to your heart. Right. Who are you going to be supporting on Sunday is my oh, big question. What kind of question is that? <laughs> Man, we're ready to beat England's butts. <laughs> I think we've got our answer. So how are you spending your time during the match? Uh, I'm putting together a private party. Uh, I'm actually in London, so it's going to be interesting because I'm going to probably be the only English, well, non-English person in the room, you know, but I, th I think it's going to be all in fun, though, but I believe that Senegal is going to win. I'm predicting 1-0. OK, and, and still keeping an eye out for the U.S. as well. Oh, yeah, the U.S. is, man, they, I, you know what's interesting? I'm so proud of the U.S. because they came so far, like, within the last five, ten years, you know, what, what, what we call it soccer, obviously, but football has been, like, almost prime, like, priority. Like, we're just selling out stadiums now in major matches in, in every state in America. So it's like, we, we have a lot to prove this year. OK, well, have fun on Sunday. Absolutely. I would wish you good luck, but uh, maybe... maybe <laughs> <laughs> anyway, everyone, good to meet you. Thanks very much indeed nah, for coming.